Okay, so hello and welcome to this Hyperledger Sweden meetup to this tech study circle. And um, in this meetup, we will make a journey to the internal versus external chain code. So what does, what does it mean is um, in the last session, um, we saw a little bit about the new uh, government, chain code government, and we saw how we can install uh, chain code and how the process has changed from version one to version two. And in this session, I would like to show you a new way. Uh, and this is a new feature, which uh, comes also in the version two and is called an external chain code service. Uh, I think one participant has asked for this, uh, for this feature or for this, for this uh, thing. And uh, that would, would I would like to point out that if you have any questions or you would like to see a particular topic, then you can uh, drop me an email or write it in the Slack channel or whatever. And I can see, I can uh, bring it in to this series and uh, we, can, uh, we can discuss about this and I can show you how you can do this. So the whole series is from the community to the community and it lives also from the community. So I, I, I like your feedback and, um, and you can say uh, what you want and then we can uh, look how we can uh, make this possible. And on the other side, you can also uh, try to make a session. And um, yeah, and then you can, we can arrange one session, I think so. So there's one question to the slides. You find the slides uh, in, the, in the chat uh, a little bit uh, uh, below your comment. And um, I think I have done a, um, a, a test for the, for, the, for, this, for the voice. So maybe it depends on you. So, and yeah, so as I have, uh, some of you know, know me, my name is Roland. Um, I'm happy to be your host for today and uh, I can, I will tell you something about the new external chain code feature today. And um, as to, to start, I will give you a short overview, uh, one short theoretical part, how we can do this, what is the difference between this external chain code service and uh, this is a little bit advanced feature and uh, we have to do some uh, specific tasks to get this running. But on the other side, we can see also how the traditional way is working. And uh, this is a very good part uh, to understand or a very good way to understand how uh, Fabric works with uh, Docker and uh, how a chain code container is uh, built and so on. So, and there are some steps to do and I will guide you through the steps. And one important part in this, in this uh, new service is something uh, which is called build bags. So maybe some of you have heard of this and or use this, this te technique. So this is a technique uh, which is related to container technology and there's a, I think a, a really a handy way to build your containers. And uh, this example shows that um, Hyperledger Fabric is, um, is a technology which uses a lot of technologies around, a lot of cloud uh, native technologies. And you can use these technologies uh, as well, not only in the uh, Hyperledger Fabric world, so you can only use it for your own development. So if you are familiar with Node.js, you can use Node.js. And uh, yes, 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 recording, recording. Was there any chance of recording this call? Yes, it's recorded and will be published on the Hyperledger YouTube channel uh, later. And yeah, and buildbacks is one way to do um, this uh, um, dockerization or containerization. And um, I will show you uh, 
in the end how we can do this uh, if you have time enough. So, but buildbacks are a part of this scenario and that's the reason why I have uh, given an overview of buildbacks and then we can see how we can use uh, buildbacks um, for with the Google Cloud Builder, for example, to build our node application, for example, or our Go application or whatever. And yeah, then in the hands-on part, so we are going to set up the new test network uh, for this uh, scenario. And um, we will look a little bit more, we will learn more about the test network. So we will uh, look in the uh, script uh, folder so we can use the script to uh, to um, to change between the organizations. So, and I will show you uh, how you can uh, do this and what is important in this step. We will also look into uh, the Docker Compose file for the first time in this series. So that's a good point where we can uh, look in this Docker Compose file because we have to make some uh, changes in this file and then we can uh, I can explain what is this Docker Compose file for and uh, what are the relevant parts of this. And um, yeah, and we have to uh, look into the uh, so-called uh, config or core, core YAML file because we have also uh, have to make some changes in this file. And then we are going to use uh, the external chain code service. So, but we will make it uh, twice. So we are going to uh, make an example with an uh, external chain code and then we will compare it with an internal chain code. So then you can see we can have uh, a one ledger, one channel and on this channel we can install a chain code with the traditional way I call it internal and uh, an external chain code uh, which is uh, used with an external chain code server. And yeah, the agenda you can find um, here as well um, for this uh, meetup and for the upcoming meetups. Here are the links, the support link. So every, um, all the sources are on this GitHub. So I have uh, posted this link as well uh, in the chat. And here we have the documentation, which you should uh, read or um, study. And then here's the link to the build bags, uh, which is, this, it's called, um, yeah, you can say it's a standard. And uh, with this standard, uh, you, can, you can, you find uh, some learning resources and you can uh, study it and you can see how you can uh, use it for your own purpose. And this is the short overview of what we are doing today. And uh, that's our uh, test network. And you see here the, the same scenario uh, as we have seen in the last session. And we have uh, a two, the, net, the test network is an organization with two peer organizations and uh, each peer organization has one peer. And uh, we have one order organization with a single raft ordering system. And then we have a ledger which connects this, uh, these organizations together. And then we have a channel. Um, this is the my channel or channel one here. And then we will install two chain codes here. Both chain codes we are now already. So the AB store, we will use the AB store to install it in a traditional way. And then we use the uh, asset transfer basic uh, uh, chain code and uh, see what is needed to use uh, this external chain code feature. And in the end, we will have this scenario in, in our network. So, okay, um, internal chain code versus external chain code service. So, um, and I think the first sentence here uh, keep it, keeps it to the point here. Yeah. Instead of building and launching the con chain code on each peer, chain code can now run as a service whose life cycle is managed outside of Fabric. So this sentence is, is copied from the official documentation. And I think that's, uh, that keeps it really to the point. Uh, then uh, the chain code uh, is run in a single container. So 
um, when the peer, the chain, when the chain code is installed on one peer, then uh, the chain code uh, will execute it. And when the chain code is executed, uh, it will execute it in an in a, in, a, in, a, in a different chain code container. And in version one, uh, this, this was a fixed process. This, this is hard coded in the, in the system and uh, you can't uh, change it. And this is a requirement uh, which came in and uh, in version two, they have launched this feature uh, and uh, they used, they called it external pillar and launcher. And um, one of this uh, feature is this external chain code server. And uh, what, does, what does it mean is that the chain code is, is not longer um, started directly from the peer. Uh, you have to start it by your own. So you can control the life cycle in the, uh, you can control the life cycle of this a chain code container and uh, but this is an as i have mentioned uh, an advanced feature and for this you need also i think for me a specific use case so maybe you can use it uh, you find the use case for this so but i think that's not the normal use case so you you must have a use case where you can um use this scenario so because uh, it, it is a little bit an, an overhead to do this and uh, yeah so um, in the documentation there is a point uh, when you use uh, fabric in a kubernetes cluster then it's uh, maybe that's a good choice to use this uh, for for the chain code and um, but in theory uh, it's like we have one chain code container running now and uh, both peers can use this chain code container and uh, execute the chain code. And in a traditional way, uh, you have every peer has its own chain code container. And as we have seen in the last uh, session that the chain code container is started. And when the chain code container is started, we can see, we can see the container and we can, uh, we know when this container is started and built. And uh, in, when we have a chain code server, and that's also an important part. So uh, you have, you have to know that when you use this new service, then you have to adopt your chain code as well because uh, we need a chain code server. And that's maybe a little bit um, a restriction. So I think that it's only possible with Go chain code at the moment. And um, the Shim API uh, has this uh, uh, capacity that you can have a chain code uh, server. And uh, with this chain code server, uh, this will work. So when you, when you would like to use the service, you have to change a little bit your chain, your chain code and uh, you have to use Go as the language for this. But we will see what we have to do is, uh, what we have to, to, to use. And what are the steps which we have to do? So the process is basically the same. Uh, as we have seen in the last session, we have to, first we have to package the chain code. But here we have a different difference. So that's without the chain code. As we have seen in the last session, in this package, there are some files. That, that's entire uh, GZ file. And uh, there we will have a, a meta file. We, have, we will have a connection JSON file and we will have the chain code as well. And uh, in this, when we package this, we don't need the chain code because uh, the chain code uh, will, uh, will be built in a separate container and will be started uh, in a separate process. So that's the difference in, in the packaging process. So we don't need the chain code uh, in the package, package in the first step. Then we have to make some configurations and uh, we have to modify modify this core.yaml file. 
So, uh, and we have to uh, include this file. So we have to override the default YAML file with this uh, settings. And uh, for this, we have to look into the core YAML file. And um, there is a file uh, which will uh, comes with the favorite examples and we can use this. And then we have to uh, bind, bind this in the Docker Compose file as a local volume so that we can use it uh, in the in the peer container. So and that's the reason why we can uh, dive into the Docker Compose file. So we have to modify two things, the co this core YAML file, and then we have to uh, adjust the Docker Compose file. So in a way that this is working. And then we can, uh, we have to look a little bit, but we, we don't have to change anything. So we can use the default example for this. And uh, we have to look into this uh, launcher scripts. So this external builder and launcher uh, are basically some scripts and uh, these scripts uh, detect what is, what is uh, your, your source code for. And then in the end, it will build for you a container. But uh, in the, in the, in the for fabric, this is a little bit adopted. And uh, so we don't need to change so much in this. So we can only uh, look into this and, uh, and see what it, is, what it is for. And then uh, we have to change the chain code as well. So uh, the difference is in the main function. Uh, we will see it a little bit later. So uh, it's not really difficult, uh, but we have to do it. And then we can deploy the chain code. And uh, that's the same way, uh, that's, that, we will, that we'll be doing the same way as we have done in the last session. So we have to install it, we have to improve it. And then when, uh, the, when, the, when the majority of the organization uh, have improved the chain code, then we can commit it and then the chain code should be ready for the invoke and query command. And of course, we have to start this external service uh, with, uh, uh, yeah, we have to do it by hand in our case. And um, yeah, we can test it also. When we stop this container, the system will not work. And when we start this container, uh, the, the, the system will work again. So you can start and stop this container. Uh, and uh, yeah, so these are basically the steps uh, which we are going to do. And uh, these are the chain code comparisons. So, um, the normal chain code is uh, in the main function. We have here the, in the first line, you can see the, the important uh, source code snippet. So we have here the new chain code uh, uh, command and we have, we have it also here. So, and the only difference in this that we have to use this chain code from the shim package, the chain code server, uh, object here and then we have to deliver some um, properties to this to this uh, object so the chain code id this is also something we have seen in the last session this is the package id or the chain code id which we will receive when we install the chain code and then the address this address came also from the package process we will see it a little bit later and then the name of the, the chain code itself. And then this is the part um, where we have, when you use, when you would like to use TLS, then you have to uh, set here the TLS uh, properties uh, according to your network. And uh, here is uh, in the first line here, uh, this is the, uh, the server config object with the uh, environment variables, chain code ID and chain code server address. And this information will come from the chain code environment file, uh, which we will see later. So, and with this, you have a bridge. So we have an environment file and then this environment file, we will uh, define these two environment variables. And in the chain code, we will uh, read this environment file here in this config object, and then it will deliver it here to the 
uh, chain code server. And uh, that's it. So these are the uh, these are the points. These are the points we have to uh, modify when we would like to use our chain code as an external chain code service. So, and the main thing is here that you cannot use your standard uh, chain code. So you have to uh, modify it, and uh, you have to do some things more when you would like to use the TLS here for the chain code server here. And we will see it later uh, also in the chain code. But here, this is the, the, the main uh, thing here, what you have to change in the chain code. So this is a, a short side note uh, on what are build packs. I, I think, I mean, that's a part, it's not so related to Fabric, uh, I think, but um, I think that's an important part that you understand and that you see that Fabric is, uh, uh, technology which consumes a lot of standard technologies and uh, build a new uh, thing and um, that is called fabric and uh, the build bags I think that's a good way when it comes to build when you work with containers and then uh, you have to create these containers and we have to find a way how this container, you can uh, create this container in an efficient way, how you can create secure container in an efficient way and uh, build bags can do this for, do, for you. And uh, for me, the most exciting part of this is the possibility to rebase an image. Uh, so uh, that means that uh, when you have a container image, then you have an underlying operating system. So you need an Ubuntu, you need an Alpine Linux, you need an Debian Linux or whatever. And uh, then you can, on this, on this container, you will have your Node application running, your Go application running, your BHP application or whatever, your uh, database server, whatever. So in every case, you need an operating system uh, or parts of the operating system in this container and um, in some times yeah, uh, you have to update this and with the rebase uh, you can do this so you can update the container uh, only the base image uh, and not your application so and i think that this is a good way to to do this and uh, yeah so these are also uh, bullet points from the documentation so Pitch bags only. The only the only the only uh, reason for pitch bags is to create runnable application images di directly from your source code, and that's also an interesting part. So um, when you use, for example, a Node.js application, and in this Node.js application you will have an Express web server, then you have to install. Um, with npm some packages express and other packages and um, the build packs uh, do that for you so they do this do all the the, the this stuff they uh, do the npm install and installs the uh, requirements uh, for this application and build your app and that's a good way to do this so and um, yeah the result is an open container image, an OCI image, and this is um, in run, a runnable image uh, for any container uh, platform. So in my example, I will use the Google Cloud Builder uh, and um, for this, and you will see that's really easy to do this in this way. And so they say the main focus is on writing code, not to containerize it. So that's, basically a point for developers. So when you write some code and then you need a container for this, then and you need a secure container for this, then you can use uh, this, this build back technology. Yes, and here in build back, as I've mentioned, the build back model has been a little bit adopted to the chain code uh, packages. And, uh, but you don't have to install anything for, for this. So everything comes uh, with, uh, with the favorite examples. Uh, only when you use it uh, for, your own, uh, for your own examples, for your own purpose, then you have 
to install these these pack packages. And uh, but I will show you later uh, how you can find this and what you have to install. But for in the case of Fabric, you don't have to install anything to use this. Everything is done with the uh, Fabric samples. And the rebase, that's, I think that's for me the, the, the interesting, interesting part that we can uh, update the underlying operating system, uh, a Debian or a Ubuntu system. And uh, yeah, so I think that's a cool process. Yeah, and then here a short uh, teaser. So when we have time enough, then we can, I can show you how we can build the Node.js application uh, with the Google Cloud uh, build packs, for example. So, because they are, called, they are new. So uh, I think the, the last week or two weeks ago, they have announced this feature. And uh, I think, uh, so we can have a look and how this works with that. And yeah, here we will have a, a short slide how this feedbacks concept uh, works here for a general application. So when we have, also we have a Node.js application. So that's the, the point of view from a developer. So the, the developer uh, developed a Node.js application, for example, and uh, the aim is that, these, uh, that this application should run in a container environment. And then he has to create um, an uh, Docker container, for example. And uh, with this uh, build back, you can do this in a very easy way. And this build back yeah, in the first step uh, could is uh, uh, need a, a build image. So the build image is something like an Ubuntu, for example, or an uh, Debian or an Alpine Linux or whatever. And then they have uh, these build backs. And uh, this is called the, the, the first step, the builder image. And this build backs is, as I have mentioned earlier, um, a, a set of scripts. Uh, which is uh, available and uh, it, yeah, it tries to uh, analyze, inspect your source code. And uh, from this information, it tries to formulate the plan to build and run your application. So when it comes to the Node.js, what does this mean? So that's a nice sentence, but what does this mean? So that means that when we have a Node.js application, uh, this inspect, this, First, in the first step, he is looking maybe for a package JSON file. And when they find the package JSON file, they say, okay, that's a Node.js application. And then install this uh, back NPM, uh, this, this package, this uh, package JSON file. And, uh, and then uh, the builder uh, means that it's a um, Node.js application and builds this application. And then in the end, we have an application image uh, which uh, can be used as, um, as any other uh, Docker image. And then we have this run image yeah, and we have this application. And uh, the run image here is, or the build image, when we uh, when we say build image here and the build image is in also in the new image, then, uh, and on, on top of this build image, there is the application and that leads to the final run. <laughs> so, and uh, the rebasing is a uh, process that we can change the, the build image here. And, uh, but we will not change the application code here. So we only change the uh, underlying image here. And, and this is uh, maybe an, a newer version of a Ubuntu or a newer version of an um, Debian and so on. And uh, when it comes to this uh, cloud ex uh, Google Cloud example, uh, I think uh, they uh, use this, um, for their cloud run uh, platform and uh, with this you can uh, and they, they use an ubuntu image for example and then they fix all the security vulnerabilities uh, which come from time to time and with this rebasing uh, we can make it sure that we have a secure underlying um, operating system and uh, we can automate this 
for the uh, container. And, and this leads to a, a new one image in, in the end. So, but the application itself will not be uh, affected from this process. And it's also a fast process here. So I think that's an interesting concept and uh, many, and this is used uh, in many uh, uh, larger applications. So uh, it's definitely, uh, it, uh, it is worth to have a look in this and see how you can use it for your own uh, purpose. Okay. So I think these are uh, my slides here. And uh, now we come to the demonstration. So, Okay, um, as I have mentioned, uh, we use the same test network uh, as we have used uh, last time. So, um, and this test network uh, is, uh, contains two organizations, two P organizations and one other organization. And um, we can start this with, this with the test networks, with the network script as we have seen in the in the last in the last session or in both session in both last sessions so uh, from this point here it's everything, everything is the same so we can use this uh, network network script and boot our uh, network but before we can uh, do this we have to do some uh, small uh, modifications and um, the third examples has a small uh, has an example and uh, this example uh, we are going to use now and uh, for this this example we will find in the uh, asset transfer basic uh, folder and there is a folder chain code chain code external and uh, we are going to look into this Opera. and there is an, an folder which is called chain code external. So, okay, we can delete here. So this is from my test that everything is running. And this is the folder uh, from the favorite examples. And um, the first step is that we, one important part is this connection JSON file. So this connection JSON file uh, will be part in the package process. So, and we can look into this connection file. So the only thing, what is here interesting is the address. So, and the address for this is uh, uh, this one. And here's a timeout. So for example, we can uh, leave this as it is and uh, we don't have to modify uh, this uh, file. And uh, the second thing uh, is the chain code environment file, uh, which I have mentioned before. And here we will have two environment variables. One is the chain code server address. And you see, this is the chain code server address. So when we change this server address in the connection JSON file, uh, then we have to change it as well uh, here. So, and uh, because we use, so we can use this standard, this standard uh, example for, for our purpose. And uh, the second thing is that we have here the chain code ID. So, and uh, this is the chain code ID, which we will receive when we install the uh, chain code, as we have seen in the last time. So the first, the, the first part here uh, is uh, the chain code name. And uh, the second here is the hash value of the installed uh, chain code. And uh, these, these uh, environment variable we have to uh, modify and uh, to see that this is the right um, chain code ID. 
because we need this environment file later when we start the chain code server. So, and the metadata JSON file is the next file we can look into. And uh, here, the only thing what we have the type here is uh, external. So that is the, the marker that uh, Fabric knows that's an external chain code. And the label here uh, is the name of the chain code. So our chain code is called basic. So, and uh, that's the reason why here the label has, has the, the value uh, basic. And these files are important for us. And the first step is that we uh, package this. And the result of the package process is, an, uh, is this file, this asset transfer basic external uh, tar set file. And, uh, but we don't need the chain code now. So the chain code is here. So this is the asset transfer go chain code here, uh, the, this, this asset. But we don't need it in the first step. So we need it later when we create the Docker image uh, with this Docker file. And then in this uh, chain code container, in this Docker container, the chain code uh, will be installed and also all dependencies. And uh, because it, the chain code should run as an external service and uh, should not part of the fabric in this, in this scenario. So, okay, so that we can use this tar command to create the same structure as we have seen in the last uh, session, but now we do it by hand. And the result is this uh, asset transfer basic file. And this is the, and, and this is the uh, package chain code, which we are going to install on the peers later. And uh, yeah, so I have, I copied uh, the chain code environment file in the test network directory. Uh, so, um, so I don't have to switch uh, between these directories every time. So, okay. And then we are ready with the package, with, with the packaging. The next thing is we have to modify this uh, config file. And uh, this config file uh, will be delivered from the fabric samples. And uh, for this, I will switch to the to another Visual Studio um, terminal. And uh, in the fabric samples here, um, we have a folder, it's called config, and there is a folder, uh, there is a YAML file, it's, call, it's called core YAML. And then this core YAML file, as so this pack here, uh, is the original one. And um, on line uh, 549, there's the part which we are interested in, so these external filters. And here we have to do the modification. But let me point, let me point to this to this uh, uh, brackets here. So I think these brackets are wrong in this file, and because it's a YAML file, and um, I have to remove it, and uh, I have changed this to this. So so in my in my scenario, it it uh, doesn't work uh, with these brackets here. So maybe that's that's wrong here, because this file uh, this file is uh, copied uh, only for, for this, for, for this uh, um, uh, fabric samples. And you will not find this config directory in the, on the official GitHub. So when you look at the official GitHub, where you can download the fabric samples, then you will, don't, you will not find this config directory. So this will come through the installation process and also with this uh, uh, config.tx YAML files and the order YAML file, for example. So, but um, I think we have to uh, make this uh, corrections here. So five, four, nine. Ah, wrong file. So, okay. 
And uh, yeah, and this is the part, the external pillars. And we have to do two things here. We have to define the path where the external pillars uh, files are located. But be careful here, this is not the path the path on your um, uh, local machine. So that is the path in the container. So in the peer container. So we have to we have to be careful and look uh, when when uh, we mount this uh, local favorite samples directory. We have to mount it on this uh, position here. And uh, yeah, but we will see it then later. So this is the first first uh, thing we have to do and the second is we have to give them a name so and uh, this i think that's only for logging uh, external sample builder uh, this is uh, yeah default name and uh, these properties here uh, we are not needed now so because we don't need uh, uh, in our in our scenario uh, we don't uh, use the tls uh, for the chain code server and uh, that's an interesting part. So I have to say, I haven't figured out how we can do this now. So if you have time, uh, then you can uh, make your hands or your finger dirty and uh, find out how you can set up the chain code, the chain code server uh, with the TLS configuration. So um, for that, uh, it was too, too less time for me to figure it out. And I never find any example in this direction. So maybe you have one or you can uh, give me uh, a good link to a direction. But this is a point uh, I, I didn't find any solution how we can do this here. But uh, yeah. And yeah, so this we have to do here to get this running. And uh, yeah, that's this one. So, and then we have to modify the Docker Compose file. And that's the first time we are looking uh, into this. And uh, so that's an important part. And that's also a basic part that every Fabric uh, user should understand how these Docker Compose files are organized. And um, as you can see here, we have a typical composer file structure. So we have here in the first, in the first uh, line here, some volumes. So we have a volume for the orderer, for the peers, and for the peers, for peer zero from organization one and organization two. Then we have a, this test network name, and then we have three services. And that's a big difference between the version uh, one because we have uh, only one order, we have this order here, and we have only two, uh, we have only one peer for each organization, and we don't have any, uh, any, any CLI container here, because we don't need it anymore in the version two. And uh, when you look into this order uh, configuration, you will see here some uh, important points. So, these environment variables here uh, will be override all values uh, in the core YAML file, which I have uh, shown you uh, some minutes ago. And uh, this is very important, uh, especially for the TLS. So here you can uh, create TLS, and uh, but we have to use TLS here because it's in Raft order and Raft. Uh, can only work with TLS. So TLS must be enabled here. So when you use version 1.4, 6 or 9 or something like that, then you can have as uh, for your test scenarios and uh, and for your for your trainings, uh, you can use uh, uh, the solo orderer, for example, and the solo orderer uh, doesn't need any uh, TLS. So. And with this, you can reduce a little bit the complexity to focus on specific tasks you are going to investigate in this part. So, but, but here this is important part. So all environments variables here, uh, and this environments variable override the values in the core YAML file. And as I've mentioned last time, so the, the, uh, 
the naming here and the, the, the art of writing this environment variables uh, uh, is a little bit different uh, to the core YAML values and properties which are in this file. So, but this we have to discover in the in other session or in a separate session. Um, some environment are variables for, for us could be important. So this is an important one. So this log, logging one. So here you can use a debug, for example, then you will have more outcome uh, on, the, on the console, for example. And yeah, then we have a debugging gear directory. So I think that is pretty standard. You can, we can use this uh, uh, as it is. And um, also the ports here. So be careful with the port. And then what we have here to look is uh, the volume. So you have to see here that the order uh, need to be, uh, have to be accessed to the genesis block. And uh, we have to include as well the membership service provider here. And um, so that's a really, really important part of what is a membership service provider in the world of Ferric. And we will spend uh, one meeting, one meetup, uh, especially on, on this one. So, but that's an important part, the membership service provider. And uh, every um, organization has its own TLS. Uh, folder and that's also an important part to understand how TLS is enabled and uh, functional uh, and works in the in the in the world of fabric. So especially when you have uh, mutual TLS or the normal TLS. So and uh, this is also an an uh, in, in part where we are go we are should make an an uh, meet up only on this topic. So. Um, and uh, because uh, that's uh, yeah, a little bit uh, difficult to understand for beginners, uh, how this TLS works and uh, what is the difference between this mutual TLS and the normal TLS. And then you will see here an important part. So you hear the word, you, you can see here production. So uh, that means uh, that uh, we will have a persistent network. So, um, and uh, with, this, with this configuration here, you can make your network persistent. And uh, that means that when you, uh, when you tear down your, uh, your network, then the data will be stored and will, will not be deleted. But not in this scenario when you use the network uh, networks, when the net, this network script and network down, then everything will be deleted. But um, uh, this is not depend. It depends not on this on this uh, um, on this volume. Uh, it depends on the uh, on the on the script which tear downs the network here. And uh, in the peer section, it's basically the same. You have also here the environment variables. You have the container names and so on. And uh, that's also important when it comes to a point where you say, okay. I would like to get rid of this uh, org one example.com. So I would like to have my own organization name here. Then we have to rewrite this container names, the service names and so on. So, and uh, yeah, but be careful with that. So when you start with, with this, then uh, you have to know what you are doing. Uh, and and uh, you have to change a lot of uh, uh, names. So as you can see here, uh, then you, so it's really, really uh, a lot to, to change here uh, when we would like to change this uh, domain names here. Uh, it's a good idea to try to write a script which uh, replaces this uh, container names. So then, because there are some, some many, many points we have to change here. But um, yeah, so, um, here also the debugging. So here you see the debug word. So you can say, okay, we want this log level or we want another log level here. And then in the documentation, you find also other log labels. Uh, you have also here the, the TLS uh, configuration and so on. So, and uh, one important part here is uh, we have to, um, when we use this external chain code server, I think we have to, uh, 
uh, commit this out here, name the chain code address and the chain code listen address. So in my examples, so it uh, it uh, it won't work when I have this enabled. So, and that's the reason why I have committed this out for for this demonstration. And uh, yeah, and here we have our modifica modification. So for the external chain code launcher. Um, for this external chain code service, uh, we don't have to change anything here in the uh, order section, in the order service here. We have to change here, we have to change here the volume and, uh, and, and add this volume. So uh, we add the, the, we have to add the favorite samples and uh, we have to add the, well, we have to override the core YAML file with our file which we have modified in the uh, configuration directory. So, and uh, these two volumes we have to uh, modify here. And then we have to commit out the chain code address and the chain code uh, listen address. So, but with this I'm not really sure. So in my case it works. Okay, so. And the same we have to do here uh, with the organization two, it's basically the same. So that's here and in this way. And yeah, so, and uh, what we have, so, and then other different is here that we don't have this PACE uh, peer files, this PACE uh, peer YAML files. So in this, in the fabric two examples, everything is here in this uh, Docker compose file. And this is also a change from the version one to the version two here. Okay, so, and uh, these are the modification for this Docker compose file. Yeah, so this is this and then uh, we should be ready to start this network. And, and this is an important point. So I would like to recommend when you try a lot of, uh, you use a Docker system uh, prune in front of this. And uh, this is a good and easy way. So when we call this, so we will stop our containers and networks and so on. And um, yeah. So we have to make sure that we have uh, not uh, some uh, unused volumes and unused uh, uh, image, container, image, con container images and so on. So it's really important that you start with a clean installation and uh, to look uh, if you have Docker volume, for example, volume LS, you see, oh, we have here Docker volume. So then we should docker volume prune. So, okay. And then you can also look if you have any network. So these are the default networks, that's okay. But this is an important part so that we uh, take care that every uh, docker, every volumes are cleared so sometimes uh, uh, you will have a problem when you start the network because of an uh, wrong uh, Docker volume. And uh, it makes sense to look, to clear everything before you uh, start a new try. And then we can start the network with the network uh, script and the up command and uh, with the create channel. And uh, we say in, in our case, we say it's the my channel as the as it's like the default channel or you we can uh, give it another name channel one as we have uh, seen in the last session. So And with this um, our basic network will start. So as you will see, everything uh, uh, works here. 
and we can check when we say docker ps so we see now we have one order running uh, and we have uh, organization two and organization one uh, running uh, with peer zero so okay and then um the the few examples comes with some helper scripts and uh, when you start with that uh, you can you, it's it's very uh, handy to use it so there's an environment var script uh, which provides some environment some uh, shell functions and one of them is this set globals and with this set globals function we can easily switch between the organization one and organization two and uh, in the last session we have created our own environment file and, and we have copied uh, some of these uh, environment variables to this file and then we have executed it with the source command and uh, but we can use it or we can use also this environment variables and uh, this and in this file and this scripts so uh, to use this we have to um, execute this script and then we should have a set globals here yeah and uh, one thing uh, we have to do is we have to set the fabric config path and uh, this is from our position yeah we have to and uh, from the sprint working directory and uh, to this config path so and with this, uh, we can switch between the organizations now. And when we, when we are going to install the chain code uh, for the organization one, then we have to uh, be the organization one. So, and uh, this is done with these environment variables. So when we say, okay, um, set globals and with one, then uh, we, we are using now organization one. And that means that when we might print and grab core. So, and you see the environment variables, the local membership provider ID, the uh, peer address, the TLS root certificate, membership provider config directory, and the TLS is enabled. So, and these environment variables with these paths gave us the right possibility uh, to act as an admin uh, in the organization one. And this is a script which will come with the few examples. And that's an easy way to switch between organization uh, one and organization two. And when you uh, use the or try the example where you're going to extend the network uh, with another organization, the organization three, then you can use the script as well for the organization. And now, um, yeah, so, and then, so I have to look if I'm on the right position, if this is right. And the first step is now we have to uh, install the chain code, yeah. And now we are going to install the chain code, uh, which we have packed uh, before for the organization one. But notice that, that, that this install process is now without the Go chain code. So, and then you see that's pretty fast because the chain code container is not built in this process now. Uh, and when we will uh, use the traditional way later, then we will see this process will take some uh, seconds uh, because the chain code has to, uh, has to be built. Uh, and uh, that takes some time. And here you can see this uh, uh, ident chain code identifier. Um, this is that what we are looking for. So for our environment variable and for the, uh, yeah, for the environment variable. So the chain code name and the hash value of that. And, but we can uh, use it with the, we can uh, get this information later with the query installed parameter as well. So. Okay, so organization one is done. So we are going to do this with organization two. Uh, and then we have, to, we have to switch to it. 
So check it again. So, and you see, we are now the local service provider from organization two, and the paths are also changed to the TLS and to the uh, admin from the, the membership, membership service provider uh, from the administrator from the organization two. And that's the user which is allowed to install uh, a chain code. So only an admin user is allowed to install, install the chain code. And this uh, crypto material came with the uh, first creation step with the create channel step here. And uh, we have to, and, so, and because of this, we can use this user. Uh, and in the MSP folder, uh, you will find the information uh, which are needed to uh, authenticate in the, in the right way. So, and then we have to install, we do it the same again. And we have installed the chain code also on, organ on PNL organization too. Then we can switch back to the organization one. And then we have to, uh, we can check uh, on, uh, on this PM. Uh, which chain code is installed. And we can do this uh, uh, with the query installed. This is also a part we, we have seen in the last session. And uh, yeah, and you see, that's the package we have installed. And uh, this is the string we are going to copy and uh, replace it here with this. So, and then we have to modify the chain code environment variable. So that's an important part. Don't forget this. Uh, so we have here a config. Um, so. so we remove this. So we check this is PE, PE and uh, six, four. Okay. So, and that's an important uh, step. So maybe when you try to modify some things, then you will have here another uh, hash value. And when you don't, when you forget to change this hash value in the chain code environment file, then uh, you will you will do everything, but you, the chain code container, uh, the chain code uh, container, or chain code service will not start. So, and uh, that's an that's a mistake uh, I have seen uh, in my in my tests uh, sometimes. So you have to be uh, aware of this, and uh, you have to be carefully with this uh, chain code environment file that this this hash value is the right one. Which is uh, which co which is the same if you have installed here in, on the on the peers when you say uh, this chain code lab, create installed command when you set this command. Okay, so now the next step is that we have to create a um, Docker image uh, for our external chain code servers, and uh, for this we switch back to the external chain code example and uh, the only thing what we have to do here is uh, we have to create with the docker build command we have to create a new uh, a docker image so let me check uh, if i have so that's we can uh, delete this one So, and then, okay, it's gone. And uh, to build this, the only thing what we need is the, 
the, the, Docker, the Docker file. But uh, this Docker file, so that's, um, is also provided in the, in the for example. So you have to, to, to have to change anything, uh, uh, nothing, you have to change nothing in this. So the only thing what you have to take care is that these path, this is the same path for your um, chain code. So maybe you will try another chain code. Yeah, um, when you try to reproduce this example with another chain code, then you have to uh, adopt here the path that when you say fair examples and then the fair examples you have another subdirectory with your uh, test chain code then you have to adjust this here and so but that's all what we have to do here and then we can build this docker image Yeah, of course, uh, the Notepad++ is a good one. Uh, you can use, but you can use different editors of your choice. So uh, that uh, depends on you. So, okay. And yeah, successfully. And then we should talk our images. And then we will have a new hyperledger asset transfer basic chain code image here. Okay, so, and then we go back to the test network directory because I think um, we have, uh, yeah, so, that's, I have to check again, make a mistake here. So this is the basic chain code number and BE section of here, this we are. Yes, so then we need this environment variable to be exported. And uh, yeah, and in chain code uh, environment file, we have also, yeah, so it's the same number. Okay, and then the network is running, but we but what we need now is the chain code uh, container running, and uh, we have to start it by our own. So we we will run it as a service as a daemon in the background here, and uh, here is the the environment file. So that's the important part. So I started this from the. I, I will start this from the test network position here. And that's the reason why I have copied the chain code environment file uh, to this uh, position here. So otherwise we have to, uh, we must change the path to the uh, chain code external example directory that this will work. So. Ah. So be careful with that. So what I have done. And now we have uh, another container running. And, and this is the container where the external chain code server is now running. And with this, we can go further and can say, okay, now we can approve the chain code. So I start with organization two. And uh, yeah, so all these parameters we have seen in the last uh, session. So 
the important parts here are make sure that you have the right channel name, make sure you have the right uh, uh, chain code uh, name and the right version and uh, uh, be careful with the sequence uh, number. And uh, here we have uh, the uh, package, the package ID. So in the last session, we, I think, uh, we used uh, CCID, another name uh, for this, but it doesn't matter what is the name. So that's an environment variable with this uh, value here. So it's the only thing which must be. So, and then we can try to approve the first one. Okay, so this is going to work. And then we switch to organization one. And do the same for organization one. Yeah. And then uh, the final step is uh, the commit step. So that when, when and uh, when we have the, when the majority of the, of the network members ha have approved this, uh, then we can uh, commit this. And to check it, we can use the uh, check commit readiness command. And you see here the approvals. Yeah, we see organization one okay and organization two is also okay. And then, uh, and then we can commit this. But these steps are exactly the same as we have seen in the last uh, session. So, and that's it. So, and then it's time to look into the chain code. Okay. The chain code is this asset transfer go code. And uh, I think that's the only thing uh, what is important here uh, for us uh, that we have the chain code ID, the chain code server address, and that you notice that you have to use the shim chain code server method here and object here. And uh, yeah, so, and that's, the, that's the, the difference, the main difference between the, the normal version and the uh, external service that you uh, know that if you're going to use this, then you will change also your chain code in this, in this, in this, in this way. So, any other functions here from the functionality? We have seen uh, this chain code in the, in the detail last time, so uh, that's the same. So there is no change uh, for this here. And then. In this, this chain code needs an uh, init, fun in init function. Uh, it's called init ledger. And uh, this is the important and <laughs> ah, it works. So chain code invoke successful. Uh, and that means that uh, the chain code server is running and accepted our uh, invoke function. And uh, now we can query this. And you see, uh, you will have the first result. And, and if this takes more than uh, one second, uh, then you know something is, is wrong. So, and uh, then you have to look into the, uh, into the logs to see uh, and, and to find uh, maybe an error. So, and uh, to, to see the logs here, so you can do it very easily when you use Docker Compose. Um, um, and this is Docker. Yeah. So with this command, um, Docker compose and logs and uh, follow. And uh, this is, a, uh, you can say uh, on which, which posi position you will see the log files. And uh, 
with this command you can see all the uh, outputs from the from from this particular docker compose file and so we can see and then we then if you prepare a second terminal so today i don't use the tmax version so i use the uh, a second terminal because uh, with this we can a little bit easier uh, do the scrolling here and uh, So let's go to this so global one, and then config path is missing. So and to check uh, if the so the query uh, the query works so as we have seen and then now we can use also um, a, one uh, transfer function to invoke something so and this is this changes the uh, the owner from asset one to Roland and uh, when we query asset one we will see Roland as well here so and um, when you see Docker PS you see here only this asset transfer basic container. And this is how you can uh, use this external chain code uh, service. So when, uh, as soon as uh, this container is in the Docker network, um, then you can use it. And when we try now to install um, the normal way, we can do it as well. So uh, in the next step, we are going to install the app, the AV store uh, chain code as an normal as an internal chain code. And then you will see here that both for PS0 organization two and one, we will have another container, the, the, these uh, uh, typical chain code containers as well. And to install this, we can uh, go back to the uh, chain code app store. Uh, go directory. So in the in, in the examples, uh, make sure that you have the dependencies installed. And then we are going back to the test network, and then we do the packing again. And uh, here's the path. So so and uh, so let me see. And in this step, the chain code will also packed in this app store target set package here. And then we do the same. As we have did for the, make sure that we are in the, in the right organization and then we're going to install. And you see, this process takes now a little bit longer. And, uh, and that's the reason because the chain code container will be built now in the background. And uh, this is also the advantage from the version two, because uh, when when we commit the chain code, then the chain code container is ready from the first invoke command on. So, and that was the diff is the difference between the uh, version one point uh, with the version one, uh, because uh, then only on the first uh, invoke command, the chain code container was built. So. It reduces the latency for the first time, and we do it for this for the second organization. Yes, you have a you have a, a single point of failure. That's correct, and uh, yeah, this is I can say maybe this is a disadvantage to this uh, uh, to this uh, to this scenario. 
And uh, but maybe I don't know how this is when when you're doing this in the Kubernetes cluster, uh, how you can handle this uh, single point of failure. But this is true. So when you use this, we have a single uh, container and we can try it when this chain code, uh, the second chain code is running, then we can try to stop the container and you will see all queries will fail. And when you start this container, the queries will work. And uh, yes, that's a single point of failure. And uh, when you use this traditional way, then we can have in, uh, we can, uh, we have a beer uh, and we have a chain code. And when we have a second beer on this, on this um, on this organization, then we have a second a chain code container as well. And when the peer uh, goes down, then we can have um, a, fa a fault tolerance system in this way. And uh, this is, I think, uh, yeah, a good way. This, I think, it's the normal way. And uh, also the gossip protocol and the, uh, when you use the Node.js, the discovery service. Uh, they will know uh, which um, which peer is online and which is ready, and will then query query uh, peer peer one or peer zero or peer three uh, from this organization to to get the data. And when you have a single uh, chain code container, then you will maybe will have a problem. So, and that's what I have said at the, at the beginning. Uh, that's that's an advanced feature, and uh, you must. Uh, take care on this. Uh, you have to handle the situation in different ways. And, uh, and you, I think you need a use case for this. And uh, yeah. So, okay, this is the chain code two. Okay. And then let us check. So that's uh, clear installed. That's only some copy and paste now. So, and that's, here you can see we have now two chain code installed with the back the basic, which we have as seen as external uh, external one, and then here the app store uh, in the traditional way. So copy this. Okay. Then export this uh, environment variable. So and then we have to improve it. That's the same as we have seen before. So switch to organization two. And uh, improve it as well. So, okay. And then we can commit it. So. It doesn't matter if an admin of organization one or organization two uh, commit this uh, because uh, we have the majority and when the majority of the, of the organization has conf have confirmed this, then uh, you can commit this chain code. Okay, so, and now you have, uh, when we look at Docker peers, and now you see a different situa situation. You see here our external chain code container is running. And then you have here the both, ex the both internal or normal chain code container, which will be created directly from the peer. So and now let us check if this chain code is running. Yes, chain code invoked successfully. And then you can see the amount of money from organization from the account A, uh, account one and uh, the amount of money of account two. And then when we move uh, 100 units from eight, from one to two, it should work as well. And you see 110 and 900. 
Okay, so now you have seen um, so and so we have seen one example for the external chain code servers, of course, on the same system uh, and uh, with the internal one. So, but the, we can query the, the, the external service as well. So when we do this one, um, so when we read the asset, asset one, and you see this is done. And when you say Docker PS and so, then we have to. Um, so let me show you. No. So when you say Docker stop. So this external chain code container is not running. And then we try to query this. You will see some errors and uh, the chain code is not running. But we can start this chain code again with our start command. This one. So um, you see it's running. And then you can create again. Okay, so I think we are done with the, uh, with the example. So, okay. Um, do you have any questions? Yeah, there are some questions in the, in the chat. Uh, I've jumped to point of view. Yes. Okay. I, I think I have covered this question. Uh, can you please share? Is any additional feature using mini fabric instead of fabric? So I don't know. So mini fabric is a um, good way to start. That's um, so it's a it's a way to. Uh, uh, fabric is complicated, and uh, you have to know a lot to to use it. And I think mini fabric is a good way to, to start. And, uh, but I, I don't know how mini fabric can handle these additional features. So, but I think mini fabric is uh, now, or is going to be an hyperledger or an incubator project, maybe. So um, they, they will push it. So uh, this is definitely a good way for the, for, for the mass. So Fabric want uh, uh, mass adoption or to improve the mass adoption and uh, mini Fabric is a good way uh, to start. But let me be honest, I think that's really a good way. But um, if you're as a programmer or as a system administrator or as a technician, uh, you have to know what is behind the curtain. And um, I think it's really important to understand what is uh, uh, how fabric works, and uh, that leads uh, to the fact that you have to spend a lot of time and uh, to learn a lot that you can uh, build the system uh, like your business needs. And um, I haven't spent so much time in the mini fabric uh, project, but I think it's a it's a really really good uh, project, and uh, you definitely sh should take time and, uh, and look into this. But in the end. Uh, it will come to the point that you uh, use your um, your fabric network uh, by your own and you have to do it by yourself and you must understand what's going on. Um, so what, um, Dame here, no, I don't think so. So 
that's an um, that's an that Dhamma is an interesting interesting uh, topic, and uh, I think um, Casey Tam has an awesome article written to this topic, and uh, you should go into this uh, and um, read read about this. And uh, but uh, in 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 the in the upcoming sessions, uh, we I think we don't use this. Maybe Casey will make an, an session for us. And then we can uh, uh, ask him to give us, us a good introduction to uh, this uh, this uh, awesome uh, paper. Um, in one of the session, can you please share how we can set up a peer to run chain code with Java language instead of Go? Hmm. Um, yeah, I think I can do it. So I'm not a Java man. Uh, so, but uh, the process is uh, from 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 the installation part. I think the process is basically the same. So, and that's that. That is what um, Fabric uh, says. It is plug and play. So, when you start with this, you say plug and play. Okay, that that sounds easy. And then you will recognize that Fabric isn't easy. And uh, what they mean with plug and play. And uh, that's the part what they mean. So as a chain code, uh, you can use uh, the Golang, you can use Java for chain code as a chain code, and you can use Node.js. And um, from the install process, I think there is, is, is no difference. And when you look into the, uh, into, into the net, in this, in, into this network script, then we have a parameter where we can say which language will be installed. And uh, then you can say that this Node.js, this is Java. And when you, when you when you unuse when you not use this parameter, then it's it will be Go. So I think from the installation process, from the proof process, that's everything the same. But it will be of course a different when it comes to how you write the chain code uh, in Java or how you write the um, chain code in Node.js. So that will be a different, of course, because the implementation is uh, a little bit different because uh, Go, Node.js and Java doesn't, does not interact with the ledger uh, directly. So they use an API. And uh, in the Go, uh, we use uh, the Shim API or the contract API. So, and this API gives us some methods uh, which we can use to interact with the with the ledger and with this chain code functions we can do some things and that's in that is also in in the Node.js world and also in the Java world and in the future I think uh, uh, other languages uh, will come and that 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 was they say well, that's the meaning of plug and play so they want to use uh, that that uh, as much as possible. Uh, Languages and uh, people with different uh, backgrounds can use uh, Fabric, and that's that's the that's the cool thing on on, on Fabric that you can use so much different different uh, techniques. But yes, it is uh, um, that's open source, and um, I think with the Go language, with Go chain code, this is the primary. Uh, the primary language for chain code development. And that's, I think it's uh, the best maintained. So, and uh, uh, and Node.js and Java are also uh, good maintained. And, um, but um, I, I know not so much about the Java world in this, in this, in this thing, but um, the installation process and the proof process is the same. Maybe we can, we can do the, the, the samples so uh, I can try if I can do that. Uh, please explain spam use cases. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> but uh, I think, um, yeah. So that's also a new topic, uh, this extensible blockchain object model. So that's definitely uh, uh, an interesting part. And um, I have to say, I have to mention Casey uh, again. He has uh, also written uh, um, two, three weeks ago, an awesome article about the XBOM technique. And um, yeah, so 
that's an interesting part um, where we can uh, use uh, where we can use chain code, I think, uh, over different uh, blockchains, but um, I have not so much seen. Uh, I, uh, that's also a point where I have to say, um, maybe I'm not the right person now to explain uh, XBOM. Uh, so that, that would be definitely good when we have some, someone like Casey, uh, and then he can explain us uh, uh, what the world is. So, okay. Um, the slides uh, I have posted here in the chat, the slides, uh, yeah. And uh, okay, so, um, yeah. So I think then we are on the end of this meetup. So um, the last thing, uh, maybe you should do it by your own. Um, here's an example where you can see how you, how you can use uh, the Google Cloud build bags. And um, this is also here in the repo. So uh, I think that's a really interesting and, and, and good uh, way to build your Docker containers. And uh, as you can see here, um, when you clone this repo here from the Google Cloud Platform, then you have different examples here. You have Node.js, you have Go, you have Python, and so on. So there are a lot of examples here in this. And then uh, the only thing you have to do to run, to create a, a runnable container uh, is uh, these two commands. So you can use this Google Cloud Builder um, and uh, use this name, this, this image name for this, and then you will receive um, a Docker image and uh, that's it. So I think that's a, a good way to, uh, to use, to, to build Docker images. And that's here the rebase command for this. Huh? So I think that's really, really uh, useful when you work uh, with Docker images and when you are a developer and you want to um, use this, uh, we have to use this, the container images. And here's an option that's the same um, uh, when you do it with Heroku, man, because uh, build bags are uh, basically uh, founded by Heroku. And uh, these are the, and when you come to my link to my documentation, this, and uh, <clears throat> you will see how you can uh, build this and to run this. So. I think uh, that's definitely something which every uh, web developer should uh, look into. And uh, yeah, that's the cool thing. So uh, as I have mentioned, and uh, that, that should be also my final words here, that um, Fabric is a set of technology from cloud technologies, which works in an awesome way together. And uh, you can use for your own purpose, single pieces from this, like this uh, cloud builds or this build bags, or Docker as well, Docker Compose as well, and so on. And also all the, all the stuff which is going on on cryptography, you can use uh, uh, the certified authorities and so on. So there are a lot of techniques which you can use in your normal IT life. And uh, when you come with a, a background for, from as a web developer, as a, as a developer or as administrator, then you will, I think you will see that there are a lot of technologies you are used and, uh, but you have to think it and you bring it in another way. And then uh, in, in the world of fabric, you can combine this and then uh, you will have a good understanding how the things work together. Um, go learning. Um, hmm. Yeah, go learning. I think there are a lot of good resources. Go is one of the languages. Uh, I think um, like Node.js, uh, for example, which could be really, really good learned over the internet. So you find a lot of useful information on the official uh, Golang site. Uh, 
and then you can it depends on you if you you can have a, a lot of you can buy a lot of books uh, when you like to, to to learn from books you have uh, um, uh, a lot of video tutorials uh, you can have uh, uh, a lot of courses uh, on edX for example of Coursera um, and so on so the, I think it, it depends a little bit on on, on you how you can learn um, you can make uh, online courses for example and yeah so i think to learn go that's that you will have uh, too much resources uh, to find but i think you you have to find out what is the best fit for you and um, but to learn a language like go node.js or whatever the the simple thing is do it so start with a simple example uh, and, uh, and then you will do a little bit of screening. So um, you can uh, make a Google alert or you can make, when you know Flipboard, you can have this topic. Um, then you can screen the, the internet every day uh, for good articles. Also on Medium, when you look at Medium, then you will find a lot of good articles about Go or specific Go topics. And uh, good out of a book. So, hmm. um, I don't know. I don't want it to, to, to feature one outro or one, one, one learning session. So, I want to be a little bit neutral on this position. So, um, I think you have to, 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 to start. And, and to look a little bit around. And uh, if, I'm sure you will find uh, um, a lot of information how you can uh, learn Go. And um, yeah, for the chain code development, there is some Go knowledge important, um, but uh, not so much, I think, because the Go chain code is really uh, strict. So you have to, there is a schema, and uh, when you know the schema, I think you can uh, handle um, a lot of use cases uh, with Go. And uh, for, for that, you don't have to be a, a very experienced uh, Go developer because uh, um, a chain code should be small. The chain code, because when it comes to performance, how, how when the chain code takes, takes a lot of time or uh, you have to do a lot in the chain code, and then the, perform, the performance of the system will go down. So you have to be, uh, make sure that the chain code is uh, small and clean. And um, in the simplest way, in the simplest thinking, the chain code is, 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 is really simple. So you will store in the blockchain a key and the value. And uh, some techniques are important. So some converting techniques, how you define a variable, how the, how you can convert a string in the byte stream and something like that. Um, but when you look through the examples, for the favorite examples, and uh, they are, I mean, for every use case, uh, for every chain code, there is at least one a Go exam, Go chain code, and you can learn a lot from this Go chain codes. And uh, you should, go through this for this basic examples and you should uh, look how this works and then you can try it. And um, so I think, um, yeah. So that's Hyperledger Framework Developer on Golang. Hmm. Hyper Frameworks developed in Golang. Hyperledger Frameworks developed on Golang. So what do you mean with this question? Hyperledger Frameworks developed on Golang. Hyperledger itself is developed in Golang. Yes. Okay. So, thanks for your time. Um, in the next session, we will uh, go back to the basics. And uh, I think that in, in the next session, this will, will be a good session because the topic will be channels. And um, this is a key part, so don't miss it. And um, 
because channels are really important in the in the world of fabric and uh, that's is uh, that will be very interesting so okay then um, thank you for your attention um, I hope uh, you have seen something new and uh, if you have any uh, feedback please uh, send me an email or write it down in the slack channel or on the meetup page or uh, you can uh, contact me uh, on different ways if you would like to see a, a particular topic then uh, you can also uh, give me this information then i will try, i will i would like to uh, organize this and uh, the points about uh, uh, um, demo yeah, and uh, x bomb that's definitely a good one so maybe i have to uh, speak with my co-moderators and uh, maybe we can organize uh, in this way in the later sessions um, someone who can talk about this a little bit so yeah okay then stay safe and take care in this uh, dangerous times and uh, yeah i hope we see we hear us uh, next time and uh, bye